Yeah, this podcast is about your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. Very, very cool, man. Uh, I yeah. did read that you're from Massachusetts. Tell me yes. a little bit about that. Well, Massachusetts is where I'm originally from. I grew up in New Bedford, Massachusetts. I still live here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm about an hour from Boston. So the music scene, especially in the area of New Bedford, is is really cool. There's a lot of, um, I grew up with a lot of uh, local musicians around mm -hmm. town, you know, and they'd play at these different clubs around my city. And, um, you know, it was it was just a nice place to grow up and, and be around music. You know, my parents are big music lovers as well. And that's really why I got into music. But um, but having that sort of like local, uh, you know, just that that system, the system of people around here, it, it was mm -hmm. super cool to be around. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. You said your parents got you into music. Tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. So when I was around three years old, my parents, uh, they got me a little toy guitar for one Christmas. And <laughs> it was actually, yeah, it was a first act guitar, this guitar company. And um, yeah, I just immediately gravitated towards it. I, you know, it was, there was something I think about, uh, you know, just just seeing a guitar player on stage play is just just completely was just like, I need to I want to do that. Like that mm -hmm. that's like seems like the coolest thing in the world. And um yeah and i just remember them you know at that same time they were playing uh different music around the house from the beatles to the grateful dead to the almond brothers band so i was getting absorbed uh by all different kinds of music and and you know the stuff that they were listening to um and yeah i just immediately fell in love with the guitar and you know uh i started to take lessons i guess more you know get more serious with it at around five you know wow. i started to yeah i was a young kid yeah <laughs> i was so super young serious yeah, at five <laughs> everybody always is so surprised they're like you were five yeah i was like yeah um yeah so it was just it, but it, you know it was nice and, and it was just like you know because all my friends at that time they were getting into like you know baseball or whatever and i, I was mm -hmm. i was getting into uh music uh so i was always kind of uh you know i always felt felt a bit different from everybody else but you know i never really occurred it never was like a bother to me though it was just always like i was just super into it and just uh you know it was always something i loved to do so sure well that guitar yeah. that your parents got you when you were three is that the same guitar you were able to play at five or did you have to, or did you get it like a like what does a five-year-old guitar player play yeah yeah well it was actually yeah yeah it was an acoustic guitar actually that i still have um it's somewhere in the house but that's uh, awesome they actually yeah i still have it and they ended up actually getting me a uh like a, a bigger uh squire fender stratocaster that i ended up playing for a, a you know definitely like five or six years you know I, I would play that that would that would be my guitar and they got me an app and you know so i i once i once i discovered the electric guitar it was just it was game over i just started turning it up all day and just playing you know so yeah yeah but uh you know once it once you know you're in that when you're in that that kid mindset you know you just you just want to go nuts all the time so yeah i i just was uh super into it and and uh yeah you know like i said i would i would go take lessons once a week i think it was like every thursday i would go to this local music store uh a town over from me and i would take lessons with a guy by the name of brian cass who mm -hmm. was my first guitar teacher and he would uh, teach he would then teach me you know uh, basic chords and stuff like that but then as we got more involved I actually I I began to learn the guitar pretty quickly as as we as I kept going to lessons and stuff it took me I guess probably a few months to to get acclimated with it but once, wow. once I started to take it super serious and get into it then um you know then he he would show me like you know because I was really into the Beatles mm -hmm. and it was like the biggest deal in the world for me is listening to the Beatles and being a huge fan of their music so he would teach me like i would go in with like you know teach me how to play like blackbird you know and he oh would, wow he would show me how to play blackbird and i would come back a week later and and you know be able to play it and stuff so i i quickly i, I guess i was a quick learner with guitar so sure it was, it came, you didn't it have a gift came. there if you could play uh, blackbird yeah. at what five six years old <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was you know it, it just became it became you know it just kind of came quickly you know like i guess uh, you know, some other kids develop, you know, uh, they're able to play sports really well, you know, or, mm -hmm. or do or dance or, or whatever it is they do. Um, but my thing was just the guitar and, and, and you know, and being able to, to do that at a young age. So that was, uh, you know, it was, it was just it was it was cool, it was really cool, you know.
Yeah. Well, how did you gain like the attention? I just read that you were like on Ellen's show, like at six, like, how does that even happen? <laughs> so, yeah. So, so my parents, my dad was very involved. Uh, he still is, but, but very much so early on. And he would email different TV show producers and, uh, cause he, they, you know, my parents kind of figured, well, this would be kind of cool, like to get them, you know, on a TV show, like what, what are the chances of that happening? Mm -hmm. You know? And I was, I was so into it too. Like I, I was like, that would be insane. Um, and like, you know, it was just, it was more of just like, that's never going to happen. Let's just do this for fun and see if, sure. it's, see if anything comes of it, you know? And, um, all of a sudden the Ellen, the generous people emailed us and were interested in having me on the show. And I was like, wow, like I, I could not believe like that would, that would even be really a thing. Mm -hmm. And so we flew out. Yeah, we flew out to, to LA. It was my first time ever on a plane. First time to wow. California. Six do you years remember old. it still? Like flying the first time and everything? Wow. I do. I was actually just thinking about it the other day. Yeah, I was, I was looking at some old pictures and stuff and it totally just brought me back. And um, yeah, it was like my first time we stayed uh, in Universal City. So like Universal Studios sure. and all that area. Uh -huh. And yeah. Um, yeah, and her show, I think they moved studios, I think, but at the time, I think it was Burbank, you know, so we, uh, yeah, we went over and and, uh, and did the show and, and Ellen was super nice and very welcoming. And I remember, uh, you know, I didn't really see her too much when we were rehearsing it, like she doesn't come out during rehearsals. So like, I, I just saw her when like, we like, she called it, me out on, on the show. When it was and taping yeah, or live or yeah, whatever. Yeah, totally, man. So, so yeah, so I, I went on the show and, and uh and she surprised me. I, I played, um, I played Twist and Shout by the Beatles. Right. Okay. And, and that was like the first song that I played. And then I, I did like another, like, you know, uh, kind of just an instrumental thing. And, uh, right after that, she came back from break and, you know, she started saying, Oh, I know, you know, um, I need like a real guitar to play. Cause I had, a, I had a, like, I was playing the Squire that mm -hmm. I was talking about. And, you know, she was like, Oh yeah, you need like a real guitar and, and something that you're, to play for a long time uh you know so she gave ended up giving me a gibson 335 which wow is this cherry red huge <laughs> uh bb king played one you know Clapton plays one yeah so like she gave this huge guitar to me still have it obviously uh and yeah i was just like you know if you go back and look at the video my face just pretty much says it all i was just super ecstatic and like just uh you know it was just such it's such a unique experience for a six-year-old kid to, to do something oh my like that gosh, you know yeah I, I, I went back to school like next i was in first grade i went back to school the next week and i was and i was definitely i was the king of my school for about a week <laughs> oh i was gonna say yeah everyone's like whoa like you were yeah. on tv like that must have been so crazy yeah yeah super super like whirlwind experience and and not a lot of people from new bedford have, have done anything like that so it was it was a it was a big deal i think i was in like the local paper and all of that so mm -hmm. yeah it was it was cool yeah that's, that's really cool um i was gonna ask you like did your dad submit like a tape of you like how did they even know that you're a great guitar player yeah, well, I had done I had done a local uh, TV TV show. Um, it was like Channel Fifty Six or something like that. It was just this local thing that that they did around the South Coast, New Bedford, and stuff. And mm -hmm. I think we might we may have sent that. He may have sent that to them, and he may have sent some other videos of like home maybe home videos of me playing mm -hmm. or like playing with other local people. Um, I, I'm kind of forget what like he like what actually like he sent, but. Um, yeah, probably just a, a collection of videos and, and, you know, they, they just took an interest to it. They, I think, and that was the time, like, you know, YouTube really wasn't a big thing at that time. Mm -hmm. I think it was just beginning. And she, I, you know, I think I was probably one of the first, you know, quote unquote guitar, you know, prodigy kids or whatever that, that sure. were, were on the show. Um, you know, cause obviously after that, you know, we'd end up seeing all of these people come on, all these kids come on or yeah, show and play certain talents or whatever yeah, yeah. so i think I, I may have been one of the first and um i think her show had only been around for a few years so um you know so i think that video ended up getting posted and went semi-viral uh at the at the time so i think you know to answer your question i think that's probably when people started to go all right who's quince Sullivan? like who's this mm -hmm. little kid playing guitar um and when they kind of started to you know, take when, when kind of like, it, it took like more of a viral standpoint, like it, it just kind of became a bigger thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, once so. that happened, like, I mean, you're at six years old, 
what yeah are you just st- then do you just go back to lessons and playing with uh you know the people sure. you mentors and stuff like what was the next step for you creatively creatively the next step well um yeah i just i kind of went back to school and uh i think at that point i was just uh playing around town and and just uh you know doing local events and playing mm-hmm. shows and stuff but um when i was seven and a half years old um a guy by the name of buddy guy who's a huge, huge oh yeah guitar i know i know legend, the, i know him le- not legend, personally le- but <laughs> yes yeah 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 yeah. everybody knows buddy yeah uh he came uh to see to the the Zyterian theater uh which is the local theater in new bedford mass and he uh i was a huge fan of buddies because um my dad had bought me the crossroads guitar festival dvd from oh, 2004 sure. Yeah, the one from uh, Dallas, Texas, the first one. And um, all these guitar players were on stage and it was just like, oh my gosh, like this is this is so cool. And I, you know, super into it. And um, and Buddy came out on on the show and I, I just remember seeing Buddy going, oh my God, like who is this guy? Like he, he's just unreal. I've never seen anybody play the guitar like this, you know, just super like, wow. And, um, and yeah, like about a year after that, we had found out that he was coming to, to play. And I was like, man, I have to go. Like, I've got to see this guy play live. Right. And, uh, you know, so we show up to the show. We got tickets. Um, we knew some people that worked at the theater and stuff. So we got to go in. And I had no idea I was going to meet him. Definitely not a, even an inkling of a chance that I would end up on stage with him the same night. Um, you know, oh, I just wanted wow. to go see him play. And uh, it turned into, like, uh, really, it truly turned into to the beginning of my my professional career, I think. You know? and mm-hmm. and we walked backstage and and uh we got to meet him and we walked in and and there he was and and he was just super nice remember he had a um he had like a u uh like a u.s flag like polo shirt on it was just like this cool it was like just the coolest thing he had all his bling he had all his rings, yeah. his watch and just like his hat you know just just the whole the whole thing you know like there he like here he is you know and uh and yeah he was super nice and and gracious and um he uh he signed my guitar i brought the same guitar that i used when i was on ellen i brought oh, rad. That, brought to that show yeah so uh he signed it and i played him a few you know licks on the guitar just to, you know i think he wanted to see if i could really play you uh-huh. know cause i'm sure he, i'm sure he gets all these kids coming in you know being like hey i can play buddy like watch me right. do my thing you Let know me play like three power off. chords <laughs> yeah like a show off sort of thing and um you know, so, uh, yeah, he ended up, uh, obviously he, he dug what I was doing and, um, and he called me up on stage that night and he, and he, uh, he just, uh, really uh, like looked at me and he just said, okay, you be ready when I call you tonight. And I'm like, okay, sir. <laughs> right. Like, did you know, it was, were you supposed to play one of his songs with him? Like, what was the, like, talked about, you know, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't talked about. It was, it was just like, you know. Uh, I'm going to call you up the last like half an hour of my show and you're going to come on and play like that's it like there wasn't any there was <laughs> like, no uh, yeah like there was str- no like yeah there's no like no this song we're going to play this song and then this song he just right. came out I just came out and played um, and what I remember you he literally did you play like one of your own original songs or like no, jam he, off he, him I was jamming off him we did some uh, blues stuff you know and then um, one of we we would kind of like he would he would kind of test me out you know he would like play like you know, I think we did like a bit of Voodoo Child, you know, by Jimi oh, okay. Hendrix. Yeah, and we yeah. would do that stuff and and I would play it back to him. And, you know, they actually the videos on YouTube. If you go on on YouTube and look up uh, Quinn Sullivan, Buddy Guy, uh, Zyterian Theater, it'll come up as the oh, first. Oh, I'll check it out. That's rad. Yeah, it was it was really cool. And, and um, like I said, it really it, it, it you know, I, I had I mean, I, I considered myself to be a professional musician at the age of like nine because i I started Mm -hmm. really touring at nine and um, gosh yeah and uh you know and but yeah that night really changed my life in in the way of like okay like this is this is it you know like this is my chance and and um you know and and it kind of it, it really was like a slow it was a slow you know rope to climb it wasn't like an overnight thing because um mm-hmm. we would go see him every time he'd come like buddy would come and play you know, every summer in like Lowell or Boston and we'd go see him. And, um, we actually, uh, began to become kind of friends with his management and stuff. So we, we would call them and, and they'd always invite us and, and I'd always play, like, he'd always have me out on stage. Um, That's awesome. because he, 
Yeah, he he came back like two months after I played with him at the Z in in, in New Bedford, and yeah, he would just call, uh, just always call me up on stage, and um, that turned into him uh, eventually, probably a year after that, inviting me to play on his album Skin Deep, mm-hmm. which was was another thing I did not expect. You know, I was nine years old, and and this this excuse me, this legendary guitar player was like, hey, do you want to come play on my album with? Eric Clapton and Derek Trucks and Robert <laughs> Randolph and all of these people. I was like, okay, like, you know, sure. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, the nine year old kid in me, I was like, all right, if you want, you know, I'll, I'll do my, I'll try to, I'll try to do my best. Like, you know, uh-huh. um, and yeah. And, and, you know, and that trickle, and then that turned into like, do you want to open some shows for me, you know, with my band backing you up? And uh, of course we went for it. And, you know, what went from, so, like you know so it started off as being like summers you know because i'd be in school so i couldn't really do much when i was in school mm-hmm. um you know flying and traveling and, and touring um so it'd be a lot of the stuff would be in the summer mm-hmm. and from that it turned into you know once i got to like uh you know it, that was sort of like middle school and then in high school um it got to the point where it was like do you want to come out like for a month you know and do this yeah and do a a month with me in europe and do uh you know uh whatever we we went to india with him uh i remember (laughs) doing that and i was still in high school you know and then it'd be like oh yeah do you want to come play uh a whole california run with me like so he would just bring me out and that's crazy um, seriously it went, went around the world and uh got to play these you know to these monstrous crowds around the world and He'd have me sometimes I'd just sit in with him, but a lot of the time I was opening for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that time, his producer, he, he had connected me with his producer that that he loved a lot. And, uh, you know, and we became me and the producer became really good friends, Tom Hambridge. And, and he produced my first few albums, you know, okay. and and, mm-hmm. and yeah. And, and so we'd be playing music off of that and we'd be, you know, selling CDs on the road and, and Buddy put out the buddy put out the first two records which was, was really cool and really amazing he really yeah he really took took you know people say that he took me under his wing but he he truly did you know he mm-hmm. really took me as you know as one of his own you know and really mentored me and and truly um uh i'd say develop developed me in his own way but totally developed me as as a as a touring touring musician mm-hmm. um so yeah that's pretty much yeah that's i guess that's like the first like seven or eight years kind of wow so you had all of your you were you were already writing your own songs at that point so when you tour with them you could open up and play a set of your own original material that young i was yeah i was beginning to write songs um songwriting didn't really become something that i was totally like enthralled in until i was maybe 17 18 That, that was really when i started to like truly get into songwriting but yeah i was Tom was actually at that time, I was about 12, 13. And um, Tom, who, who produced uh, the first couple of albums, he, he was writing a lot of the songs. I would co-write here and there, mm-hmm. but nothing, nothing really, um, you know, I didn't, wasn't like writing all the songs or anything like that. But, but that became, that obviously became uh, more of a thing when I, as I, as I get, got older, you know? Sure. What yeah. would you say like, so like on Cyclone and Getting There, those were kind of more written by, by him? Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say it was like 80, 20, the first okay. couple. And then um, Midnight Highway was probably, uh, I'd say like 30 to 40, right? You know, 40% me uh-huh. and, and 60% him. Um, and then obviously, you know, as we, as we move into the, 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 the modern, the modern day Quinn Sullivan, uh, sure. yeah, it was, it was, it was 50, 50. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. with the new, with the new song, that one's completely you. The, the most that recent? one is, that or one 50, is co it's a 50 50 yeah it's co-written by me and a uh producer that actually produced uh the, the new album for me uh his name is oliver lieber okay. and um we we co yeah we co-wrote that together um and it started off as a writing session that song in particular it was um because we were writing for the for the new album and mm-hmm. um and that one came together pretty quickly uh it came together in about an, an hour and a half uh we wow. were just sitting down yeah, he had played me. Uh, he had a, a chord progression on the guitar that he was that he was playing around with. And I remember walking to the studio one morning, and I, I I just he played me two guitar loops that he had been working on, 
played me that one first and I was just like what is that like that that's true like that's I feel like we could definitely like do something with that sometimes mm -hmm. you just hear a melody and you're just like yeah I gotta I gotta jump on that I gotta yeah, do yeah. Like that, you know <laughs> and uh yeah we started to write this song and uh lyrically the song uh is about you know we were talking a lot about we were having a lot of conversations about life and about the way we felt about stuff and uh you know, we, we started talking about kind of how the world, the situation of the world was at that time. And mm -hmm. when we wrote the song, this was like, like pre pandemic and pre okay. oh, that, coronavirus. That was kind of yeah. my next question was going to be what if you wrote that before the world kind of shut down. <laughs> no, it was written into it was like mid 2019, I'd say. Okay. And um, so yeah, so so then I'll get to that. Yeah. So um, so the, yeah, the songs about uh, pretty much like, uh, a guy has a dream one night of a world of just peace and love and and just good good vibes only. There, there's no there's nothing going on other than everybody coming together. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be sort of like a unity song, uh, po you know, sending out a positive message. Um, but you know, as the world, you know, the world the world really wasn't in that great of a place then. But it certainly, uh, as we know, got way worse as 2020 yeah. began <laughs> began to come. And uh, you know, so we were like, wow, like once, once we had finished uh, writing all of the music and, and, you know, we kind of put that one, you know, we recorded the song, but I never really envisioned it as being like a single uh, mm -hmm. for some reason. I, I just had other songs in mind of putting out first, but this one, I don't know, it just felt so right and, and so real and, and honest. And, you know, as, as 2020 began to unfold and as we began to see everything happening with mm -hmm. the pandemic and, and, you know, everything else happening, uh, I was like, this this has to be the first one. Like this just feels like it it, it just has to be. And so we ended up uh picking this one as as the first single. And um yeah, it's 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 uh it's been out for about a couple weeks now. It's been doing it's pretty well, you know. Doing it's really been well. getting some it's been getting some positive feedback. So I'm I'm happy to uh to see that and and you know, all of that. So I love the music video too. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's rad. Yeah. The old car and you know, you're playing Thanks. guitar in front. I really like it. It's cool. I just I checked Thanks. it out before we started talking. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> we've shot that in um Jersey City actually in October. Um and Trevor Banks actually directed the video. He's a Brooklyn based uh video director. Oh, um, cool. and D and DJ too. He's really cool. And um yeah, that one came together. He he had uh reached out to us and uh you know kind of thought about a treatment that he had in mind and you mm -hmm. know there was a few tweaks that i had made to it but it was pretty much all together and all, all came together pretty easily and we uh we i drove out to new jersey and filmed wow. it in about a day yeah i filmed it in about a day and it was my it was funny because it was my uh first time that i was like you know in a car going somewhere like like far <laughs> yeah. like, you know i hadn't been i think the last time i had traveled was like you know finished making the album in the early part of 2020 like right like january so like right before like a month before the pandemic so okay we had finished everything so i had really no reason to travel after that you know we had done some shows in upper state new york but then you know obviously everything went lockdown mode so mm -hmm. um we just kind of i just kind of stayed home so it was just nice to get out for a minute and uh, right. go do something you know um but yeah it came out i thought it came out really well and and it's definitely uh you know, one of the, probably the most, the most proudest I am of any video that I put out. So that's yeah. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I want to touch on yeah. Ellen real quick again, because I did read that when you returned on her show, she gave you another guitar. I didn't realize that she gave you a guitar the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she did. So, yeah. So I actually went on for a second time when I was, and this was the second time I was like a, a, a an official musical guest. Like the first time yeah. was just was like, oh, he's, he's the cute, you know, whatever. I, like, yeah, I, I hate the word prodigy. Kid. Yeah, 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 whatever. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't knock it, but you know, but uh, yeah, so she she called, but they, yeah, they officially wanted me to come back as a musical guest. So we we ended up going to do that. And, uh, and yeah, that was, that was a real, that was, I mean, the first time obviously holds a special place in my heart because it was my first time on national TV and mm -hmm. it was such a new thing for me. But the second time, um, you know, it certainly on uh, social media gave me a lot of attention and, and sort of, uh, you know, it, it kind of, uh, it, it kind of, you know, advanced me a little bit, you know, which sure. I was really, really happy to see like everything, you know, people talking about it and all that. So, um, but yeah, the second time I performed uh, one of my songs called She Gets Me, 
that mm-hmm. had just come out as a single and uh yeah i went on and and yeah she gave me another uh guitar she gave me a fender strat yeah that's so rad <laughs> yeah 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 do you so play got- that one probably doesn't get played right it just is it like mounted in a case oh, or something <laughs> <laughs> it probably should be i actually no i do play i play both of them uh, oh you do i actually cause... i do yeah i know i i you know it's funny about what's funny about the gibson the first guitar that i got was um it's actually i ended up getting it i got to get it signed by i met bb king uh-huh. and oh, wow. uh, i got to i got to play with bb a few times and um over the years and and the first time I had met him, uh, I, I had gone on his bus and, and Buddy had introduced me to him. It was when Buddy and BB were touring together That's across crazy. the U.S. And, <laughs> yeah, and it was super cool. And uh, yeah, and and I was like nine or ten and, and I walked uh, in, into his bus, like his tour bus. And, and we walked back and there he was. And, and um, you know, nine-year-old Quinn, hey, can you sign this BB game? <laughs> yeah, sure. But he did, you know, he was very nice and gracious, just like Buddy, you know, and just super welcoming and nice. And um, he did sign it. So that that one, uh, I don't take out much on the road. I, I kind of keep that one close to me at home. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I, I read that she signed the Stratocaster. So I didn't know if you're like, okay, she signed this one. I'll go display it. But BB King signing a guitar is like, yeah. <laughs> like, well, no offense funny- to Ellen, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the funny thing about that, the, she did sign it. But what happened was the back of the guitar was actually um, there's a little bit of this plastic that goes up against the the back of strats. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. On like the back and. Uh, and she had signed the plastic, so it was like, oh, yeah. So you just she remove signed... the plastic piece, and then you can put a new yeah, plastic and then piece. Her on signature it. was gone. Yeah, yeah. So that was unfortunate, but um, I I got over that one kind of quick. I mean, you know, but <laughs> <laughs> no, BB King. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Much rather, yeah. BB is is uh, yeah. That's never get that's never get rid of that one. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Well, so um, so when the lockdown happened, you weren't touring at the time. You were just wrapping up your record. Yeah, I was just wrapping up the album and, you know, we had some plans to tour, definitely a lot of plans to tour, um, but everything sort of got pushed back because as the pandemic began to unfold, we were, what me and um, my, my record company and all my team was just, we were just like, we have to wait, like, we don't want to put anything out if we can't tour it. Mm-hmm. And then we found ourselves coming into this year and we were like, well, we have to start this at some point because like this we don't know how long this is going to last you know so like we and i i was so desperate to get new music out because i hadn't i didn't put out anything in like three years like i I really waited a while um yeah the process for this album i really wanted to take my time on this one Mm -hmm. and really um think about things a bit more and think about uh you know truly musically what i wanted to do you know because you know i'm known for for one thing, you know, and that's the guitar and, and being mm-hmm. and being one of those one of those guitar guys. But I, I really wanted to get deeper into the writing and deeper into the, uh, you know, make it more about the songs than mm-hmm. the guitar playing and, um, you know, kind of find myself, I guess, a little bit as an artist. So it was nice to, to take that time to really write these songs and develop them and sit with them for a while, change them up, edit them, all that. So um i'm really proud of this this record i'm I'm really happy uh to to say that it is coming out at some point this year we, ha- we, don't, we don't have a date set because we just don't want to have say it comes out on this day and then we can't tour right so, of course like we're just waiting for the right moment to to really put it on you know full throttle mode and just go for it so so we've got a song out now we got all around the world out now mm-hmm. and then we've uh we're gonna put out uh another single probably in the next month or two so yeah we're just we're just letting these singles brew and sure you know see what happens you know that's super exciting man that's awesome um what about like i mean you know obviously we can't play shows out but have you done any like the the drive-in concert things or like live streams like do you do that at all Mm. i've done a bit yeah i've done a little bit of the live streaming stuff i haven't done a drive-in show i'm a little on the edge about one of those i i've (laughs) i've had some friends of mine that have done them and they have like you know some of them say it was okay but some of them said it was weird so Mm -hmm. like i I don't knock anybody for doing it though i mean i i think it's you know it's it's definitely uh you know because a lot of these people um you know live music is so important and i think people are are you know especially right now are just craving to to go see a show and so um 
Yeah, I think over the summer, I remember uh, hearing about some stuff that was happening like at the Cape in, in Cape Cod and stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, but I know, no, I never went to any. I, I I've heard I've heard mixed things, but um, but yeah, no, so have I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just been a bit. I don't know. It's something about sitting in your car watching a show. I just can't get into. But um, but hey, you know, you gotta, you, you know, you have to do it some way. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, the the live streaming thing is has been kind of nice to to be able to connect. Cause that's really the only way we can connect right now with, right. with the people that are following us, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's through, through live streaming. And I think I've seen a couple from other artists that, that are looking pretty cool. And, and so, you know, trying to kind of be in that mode of just like putting out, you know, live videos and stuff like that. But, uh, but yeah, I've certainly missed touring. That's, it's definitely, uh, <laughs> it's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. It's something you've been doing since what you said you started touring at nine or something. Yeah, this is the first probably this this past summer was the first full summer that I've ever been home since I was eight years old. So, oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely like a bit of a culture shock for me. But uh, but no, I actually, you know, sort of the silver lining in all of this is for me has been, uh, you know, uh, kind of like reconnecting with people that I haven't talked to in a while. You know, mm -hmm. not that I would not that I didn't have a lot of like, you know, many friends growing up. I did have very good friends growing up, but. I couldn't see them a lot of the time because I'd right. be touring and on the You're road. Gone, and doing... sure. Yeah, so I, I, um, I wouldn't say that I missed out on anything, but I definitely, uh, were I was just wasn't home to to experience, you know, birthday parties or or whatever it may be, you know. So, um, so it's been nice, you know, to kind of uh, rekindle old friendships and stuff and relationships with people that I've haven't really had the chance to uh truly connect with over the last like 10 sure. years <laughs> um you know but yeah that that's been nice um so i've just been kind of kind of focused on that too but um but yeah no it was nice that the beginning of the pandemic to have some time to just relax a bit and mm -hmm. just reflect i guess but uh you know after like the sixth month i'm i'm kind of <laughs> I'm, getting, right. I'm getting a little bit like come right. on let's go <laughs> yeah as we approach the full year of sitting inside you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh man, that's I yeah. Nobody would have ever guessed it was like oh it, things will happen in a, two months, and then it was like the summer, and then it was the fall, and now it's I've been hearing next this coming fall. So fingers crossed on that. Yeah, I know, I know. Me too. I, I keep I try to keep up to date with it. So hopefully, hopefully something will happen. I see all the festivals getting canceled, so I'm kind of bumming. I know. But yeah. But I know we'll, the, we'll get there. the third time rescheduled festivals are getting you know, canceled. Yeah, again. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, At some point, totally. those 2020 concert, or those 2020 festivals will happen. But yes, yes, well, for <laughs> sure, for sure. <laughs> right on, Quinn. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is yeah. a great podcast. I was actually just listening to uh, the one that you did with Tori Kelly. I love. Oh, just, awesome! Big, big fan of Tori. So yeah, thank was, you. Was, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. Thank you. I have one more question though. I want to, before I let you go, if that's cool, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. That's a good question. Um, yeah, you know, you know, a lot of people have like misconceptions about what it is to really be an artist and what it is to be, um, you know, I think of myself too, as also, I, first of all, I'm an artist, but second of all, I'm also a touring musician and there's, there's two sides to it, I think. Mm -hmm. And, and a lot of times when people get into this business, they think it's one thing and they just think that it's like just one dimensional. And then they find out really what it feels like to, to go on a long tour and, and it can be super grueling and, and it can be, uh, you know, you can, you can, you're, you know, you're away from home a lot and, and it's, it's definitely a commitment, you know, you have to really commit to the craft and commit and, and to why, like, you know, you have to kind of ask yourself like why, why am I doing this? And uh, what what are the reasons of why I'm I'm pursuing this? So I think my advice would be, you know, once you figure out really uh, why you're doing it, because I think the why is really important. Because um, a lot of people that I've seen, uh, not everybody, but some people that I've I've sort of seen get into this recently, um, you know, you see these people come along and and they they. They seem to be doing it not maybe not for the right reasons. You know, mm -hmm. they they seem to be doing it for the maybe not the you know the money or the fame part of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think if you can get past those two things and and see it for something more, you know, because anybody can go out and get a job and and make money. You know, everybody mm -hmm. can do that. But 
but this business is is surely i think a bit different in the sense that it's it's based on creatives you know it's based on making art and music so um you know you have to be doing it for those reasons and not and not the other reasons because if you're doing it for the right reasons then all that other stuff will naturally come when it when it's supposed to come when whenever whenever it is supposed to come so that i guess that would be my advice just do it for the right reasons yeah 